Welcome to the 2022 Lubricants Industry Roundup. I did one of these last year and people have asked for it again, so here goes. The biggest news in the engine oil space was the final release of the ASEA E category, which had actually been delayed from 2021 into 2022. The E category obviously covers heavy duty engines, and the big news was the replacement of E6 with E8 and E9 with E11. Some of the changes actually bring the ASEA E class and the API C-Class categories closer together with the adoption of some common testing standards such as the Volvo T13 test as well as the Caterpillar oil aeration test. Further introductions included biodiesel cleanliness testing as well as a piston cleanliness test which for the first time featured steel pistons which is reflective of how the industry is moving forward. Manufacturers have until May 1st of 2024 to fully transition to the new E-Class category at which point a CA 2016 claims will no longer be recognized. What we can expect to see in future is an F-class category for fuel economy. This will probably lower the HTHS viscosity requirements in line with what we see in API. There's also talk of a new JSO spec for motorcycle engine oils coming in 2023, so keep a look out for that. In business news, the big one is that Saudi Aramco acquired Valvoline for 2.65 billion big ones. Now that is a huge acquisition in the lube oil space, although MBS probably found the money in his couch cushion. How this is gonna affect the day-to-day -day operation of Valvoline remains to be seen, but for the moment, expect very little changes as Valvoline continues to operate as it always has, but simply under the Aramco umbrella. As an early Christmas present, I think on December 23, Shell actually acquired Allied Reliability through the Pennzoil Quaker State Company, which is itself a wholly owned subsidiary of Shell US. A little bit convoluted. Basically, Allied Reliability provides consulting and reliability services, and this was probably expected to be wrapped up under the Shell Lubricants umbrella. Chevron also finalized its acquisition of the Nextbase brand from Neste, which was originally flagged in 2021, but the deal finally closed this year. That brings along with it Neste's renewable base oil technologies, which will be folded into Chevron base stocks. Shell made another move to acquire the Panelin Group, which was a transaction which brings a quite a large offering of biodegradable lubricants with it. And SKF joined forces with Castrol to offer its double separation technology in neat oil manufacturing processes. Now, something that you'll realize about the last three acquisitions is that they all had that sort of sustainability bent to them. And of course, sustainability continued to be a huge theme of the lubricants industry in 2022. The Asian Lubricants Industry Association kicked off 2022 with its annual meeting, which was actually titled Accelerating the Sustainability for the Lubricants Industry. So that was obviously a major focus in Asia. Fluitech, for the third time, held its annual LRVS summit. I was fortunate enough to be a presenter at that one, but most of the presenters actually had some kind of sustainability component to their presentations, showing its effect on the industry. The Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers, also just STLE, held its second e-mobility conference, which centered obviously on the challenge of lubricating EV drivetrains. Now, all this is set against the expectation that in 2023, we're gonna see the American Petroleum Institute come out with some standards, which talk about the calculation of CO2 impact when we're manufacturing lubricants. If there was a huge carryover from 2021, it was supply chain. Now, at the beginning of the year, supply chain constraints were all about engine oils, with some of the major additive manufacturers actually running completely dry on CK4 additive packages. That sent ripples throughout the industry because CK4 is such an important grade for a lot of the transportation sector. That focus shifted later on in the year to industrial gear oils, with many distributors and customers being placed on allocations by even the major lubricants brands. Now, I haven't been able to get to the bottom of where this all started for the gear oils, but my sources tell me that it actually has its roots in the Texas deep freeze of 2020, when a critical manufacturer of components that go into extreme pressure additives actually had some of its reactors broken and they remained down. So expect to see tightness in the gear oil market continuing into 2023. Now, of course, anywhere where you have supply chain tightness, you're gonna have price increases. And price increases for my customers certainly range anywhere between 10 to almost 30% as a combination of both supply chain disruption and inflation both met together in a bit of a perfect storm for the market. Personally, 
2022 was actually a pretty big year. On December 30, this channel actually tipped over to 10,000 subscribers. I know that subscribers are a bit of a vanity metric on YouTube, but I am completely flabbergasted that there are 10,000 people out there who would actually choose to listen to me talk about lubricants. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who watches these videos. It really means a lot. Throughout the year, I've obviously been serving customers in a consulting capacity, but I've also been building out the training modules. Huge thanks to all the early adopters who have gotten on the Lubrication Expert website really early. It's been fantastic to see people completing all those modules and giving me a lot of feedback. I've just opened up a forum section, so if people want to ask questions and get them answered, please go there. That part of the website is actually completely free to use. And what you can expect in 2023 is the full suite of ICML courses to start being available at a reasonably affordable price. I wish you all the best fortune in business. And if you have any questions about lubricants or lubrication, please feel free to reach out.